Assalamu alaikum, I'm Zafar Bangash. Welcome to Crescent Commentary. On November 6th, when Barack Obama was re-elected President of the United States, there was much drum beating in the U.S. among his supporters that Obama had achieved a great breakthrough. But when we look at the figures and statistics, we find that all that this election did was to restore the status quo. Obama, of course, got back into the White House. The Senate is still controlled by the Democrats, whereas the House of Representatives is controlled by his rivals, the Republicans. So in that sense, the status quo has been restored. Obama, of course, is, is facing a great many challenges, both internally as well as externally. The first challenge that he himself has talked about is the fiscal cliff. On January 1st, 2013, if an agreement is not reached with congressional leaders to increase the taxes on the very rich and to reduce some of the subsidies and cut expenditures on Medicare and other social services, that automatically the previous uh, tax cuts would be removed and they would new taxes would be imposed on all of the American people. That obviously would affect, uh, affect the middle class Americans as well. While this fiscal cliff uh, crisis is being talked about, another crisis has emerged in the United States. An estimated 100,000 people in 20 states out of the 50, 51 states in the United States have signed petitions that they would like to secede from the Union. And the largest of these uh, petitioners, of course, are from Texas. It needs recalling that from 1836 to 1845, Texas was an independent state. And in 1845, it signed the instrument to join the Union. But according to that instrument, there is no provision for any state to break away, but there have been more than 25,000 signatories in Texas that are demanding that they want to break away from the United States and form their own country. Now that's a, a, a good, interesting, tantalizing challenge that Obama would face. But Obama faces other challenges as well at the international level. The first, of course, is the, the defeat of the U.S. and its allied armies in Afghanistan. And they're trying to find a way to rearrange the equation so that while they create the impression that they're leaving Afghanistan, the U.S. does not want to leave Afghanistan. So it is that kind of a dichotomy that Obama has to sort out. Secondly, the Middle East region has undergone fundamental changes. Two of uh, the U.S.'s favorite puppets, in Tunisia as well as in Egypt have been consigned to the dustbin of history. People in the region are becoming more assertive. Of course, the Americans uh, and his, their allies overthrew the regime of Colonel Gaddafi, brutally murdering him in the process in October of 2011. But Libya remains uh, an enigma and a dilemma for the U.S. because there are militias that are now totally out of control and Americans are at their wits end as to what to do. Their ambassador, uh, as well as the three other American embassy officials, were killed in Benghazi on September the 11th, 2012. And it has now emerged that, in fact, the U.S. was maintaining a black prison in Benghazi next to the U.S. consulate. So that's something that, that comes to us through the courtesy of Paula Broadwell, the woman that was uh, involved in an extramarital affair with the ex-CIA director, General David Petraeus. And of course, it's the problem that uh, America is facing in Syria, where it has not had much success. And finally, America's major challenge comes from China that is now becoming more assertive. In fact, some estimates say that by the year 2016, China's GDP would surpass that of the United States. And America is now beginning to challenge uh, China in the South China Sea as well as the Pacific region. So Obama is going to face a host of challenges in his second term as he proceeds. And these are not going to be easy to resolve. 
because of the fact that Obama is really not answerable to the American people, he is actually answerable to his corporate masters that are the real masters of America. And I think it's important for American people as well as other people to internalize this reality that no matter who they elect, whether it is a Democrat or a Republican, ultimately these individuals are answerable to their corporate masters on Wall Street and in other high industry uh, positions that basically dictate American policy. But the reality, the sad reality of America's existence is that it is now in a tailspin and it is highly unlikely that it would emerge from its uh, downward spiral. You've been watching Crescent Corner. I'm Zafar Bangash. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.